This morning, Vionis announced the Vespera Pro that will be available next May. And uh, uh, that allows me to update my four-way comparison and make it a five-way among Stellina, Vespera, the Seastar S50, the Dwarf 2, and the new Vespera Pro. For a starter, they are dropping the price of Vespera to $14.99, and uh, they made Stellina available again, which had been off the market for a little while. Uh, Vespera Pro uh, starting price will be $24.99, However, they're making a special discount for people who place the order now at only $19.99. Uh, I did not find any evidence that it will be a different form factor from the Vespera, except for the light. They have gone from blue to red, based on many requests from astronomers saying, we want a red light, not a blue light. Uh, other than that, we are still looking at the Dwarf and the Sea Star in a class on their own, price-wise and uh, weight-wise. Uh, Vespera is obviously less than half the weight of uh, Stellina, and uh, this is making a big difference. Uh, the Vespera Pro uh, could possibly make Stellina obsolete. It is an alt as mount and Vionis promises a pro field corrector, uh, whereas they used to refer to Vespera as a, a field rotator. Uh, Stellina stands alone here having a hardware sensor rotator. The sensor itself within Stellina rotates to keep track of the movement of the Earth, and this has been an incredible feature that I've enjoyed many, many times. Uh, besides uh, that, uh, Sistar and Dwarf use software, and uh, the corrector there is not as good as I'd like to see. So I'm anxious to see what Vespera Pro uh, brings to the table. Nothing has changed there. It offers autofocus, the go to feature. A big change with Vespera Pro, Vionis is promising that it will take darks automatically and perform automatic uh, correction for hot pixels uh, on the sensor. Hopefully that will uh, erase the problem of walking noise and background smudge that we experience with Stellina. Uh, this also promises to have a much faster processor on board uh, to allow it to perform those features. In terms of lens, they promise that uh, the Vespera Pro will have a 250 millimeter focal length with an f over 5. Uh, that puts it uh, in line with the C-Star again, 50 millimeter, 250 millimeter, uh, same aperture. Stellina here remains the bigger aperture among them and dwarf the smaller aperture an 80 millimeter aperture for Stellina uh, still allows it to suck at least twice as much light in as a Vespera Pro would do and both are uh, f over 5 1.6 degrees they're using a square sensor in this case we'll get to the sensor a little bit later and discuss it uh, here it is the only one among the five instruments that uses a square sensor at 1.6 by 1.6 degrees it has a fairly decent uh, field of view it's an apochromatic quadruplet uh, pretty much like the Vespera uh, up from Stellina which is a doublet and from the Seastar and Dwarf both of which are triplets here a big breakthrough. Vionis claims that the Vespera Pro will have a 16 limiting magnitude. That alone opens up the sky to some of the fainter nebulas and more importantly allows for imaging to take a lot less time. 
Uh, I'm very interested in seeing whether uh, this 16 limiting magnitude is real. Uh, that puts it in uh, contest with uh, some of the larger telescopes like the Celestron Edge HD 11 inch. And uh, for a small uh, 5 kilogram machine, 11 pound machine, to be able to accomplish a 16 limiting magnitude is unheard of. Uh, that alone is worth looking at. They promise us an 11 hour battery and uh, a built in do heater. Uh, those three items on the Vespera Pro uh, are a head scratcher. Being able to go 11 hours with a built in do heater and the limiting magnitude of 16 allows us to reach some targets that are unreachable otherwise with the Stellina uh, or the Sea Star and definitely not the Dwarf that claims a limiting magnitude of only 9. Looking at the sensor, the Vespera Pro is, in, is using the Sony IMX676 which is a 12.5 megapixel sensor. Uh, that's uh, at least twice uh, what we see on the Stellina and uh, almost an order of magnitude bigger than Vespera and Sea Star. With a sensor of uh, 3500 pixels in each direction uh, and a field of view of 1.6 degrees using a 250 millimeter uh, focal length uh, makes planets within reach. A simple calculation shows that Jupiter, on a good day, uh, can actually take 900 pixels on that sensor. Uh, 30 pixels by 30 pixels, uh, we are going to see some good features of Jupiter and Saturn on the Vespera Pro. Uh, 2 micron pixel size and uh, pixel depth of 10 or 12 bits. So, all in all, it is a, an intriguing new device. Uh, sadly, it will not be available till May of 2024, uh, which, if we follow Moore's law, makes it a whole year old with a technology uh, that is a generation behind uh, what we would like to see. So, this is the Vespera Pro. My initial assessment of the technical specifications, I like it. Uh, I am not ready to commit $2,000 today for a device that will not be available for a whole year. Uh, Vionis promises another announcement on Thursday, tomorrow. So I'm going to wait and see what that second announcement will bring. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, signing off from the Roosterin Observatory.